Yes, sir. Uh, sir, can you uh, briefly explain, uh, give an idea about the dual fuel engine working? All right, dual fuel, as the name suggests, two few two kind of fuels, right? So in conventional ship, conventional engines, which we call it diesel engines, they burn diesel or heavy oil normally. Heavy fuel or diesel. Fuel characteristics are almost similar. So the working principle of those engines are same. Like you have your car engines. So car is a petrol engine. So let's say any a truck engine. Also. So similar kind of an arrangement will be there where a gas is compressing. Actually air is compressing and it is going to a very high temperature. When it is very high temperature, you inject the fuel, it will automatically burn. And you guess you get, uh, get the power. Now, now these days uh, there is a, a lot of focus on the dual fuel engines, which suggests that okay, you are burning the diesel, but you you should need to burn one more kind of fuel, which usually is a gaseous fuel, or in some cases it could be methanol or other fuels like blend. It could be blend and all. Uh, so, normally on ships, you will find these days, they are capable of burning gases. And why, first of all, what, what is the need? So, need is important. You need to know what, what's the need. For examination purpose, if you are asking. So, a surveyor must be interested to know, do you even know why are we focusing on dual fuel engines these days? Why are we, why are we talking about dual fuel engines? Earlier, we didn't have these dual fuel engines. Now, why? Why now? So why now is because of regulation, environmental concerns. Because of CO2, a lot of CO, uh, CO2 production that happens. And because of this, global warming is happening. That you know. So we need to control the emissions from the engines or ships. Now to limit the emissions, we for, there are for, uh, certain measures that we need to take. First of all, our engine should be efficient. Combustion should be efficient. Second is the amount of CO2 generated by the fuel should be less. Okay. So now if you compare with diesel, which is 3.2 tons of CO2 produced per one ton of uh, fuel consumed. So if you're consuming one ton of a fuel, you will produce 3.2 tons of CO2. But at the same time, if you compare it with gaseous fuel like LPG, which we normally break it down to LPG butane and LPG propane, then the amount of CO2 produced per ton of fuel is less, which is close to three tons. If you take LNG as a fuel, which is predominantly methane, LNG, uh, liquefied natural gas. So if you take natural gas, which is not predominantly methane, the amount of CO2 produced is even less, somewhere around 2.7 tons per one ton of a fuel consumed. So that means you are producing less amount of CO2 and le emitting less CO2 in the nature means, means you be, somehow you are improving, um, uh, first of all, improving efficiency. Second is the, the nature of the fuel itself is like this. The amount of CO2 produced will be less. So global warming, potential, Ultimately, you are actually helping the nature by, by producing less amount of CO2 because CO2 is a greenhouse gas which produces heating effect. Now comes that how does an engine burn gas if it is designed for uh, for to burn diesel? How come it burn the gas? Well, for that, there are certain design modifications that are done to the engine. Now, gas, you can admit into the engine just like injector. Like there's on top of the so cylinder head, there is an injector. So in some designs, you're injecting pressurized gases. LNG can be, well, first of all, LNG has to be vaporized and kept in a gaseous form. And this gas is now injected with special injectors from the top. Right. Uh, these kind of engines are called MEGI engines, M-E-G-I, gas injection. Right. There are other kind of engines where you 
uh, actually mix the gas with scavenger. Right. So scavenger, when it is admitted, there are on the cylinder liner itself, there are certain ports, right? The, which, which we call a gas admission ports. So gas is admitted, let's say LNG or LPG, they're admitted from the sides. So when the piston is going for compression stroke, it takes first air and when it moves slightly up, it the gas is actually mixed inside it. And when it goes to the TDC, this is when the diesel, small amount of diesel is injected, which is acting like a pilot fuel. So pilot fuel, diesel is always injected, always. Whether you are running in diesel mode or gas mode. Because you need diesel to actually trigger the fire. Because it is difficult to uh, basically uh, catch, basically auto ignition is difficult just with gas. You have to inject diesel on top of it. So the moment diesel is injected, they produ it produces fire and this fire will burn the gas also. Okay, so pilot fuel is always a diesel. It is always injected, whichever mode you are running in. So, but the, the, this principle where you admit gas from side, this kind of engine, we'll call it um, MEGA, gas admission, right? So MEGI, MEGA are the basically models from MAN BMW. Then you have got other uh, maker also, like we have got Artiflex Advancement, right? If it, uh, like WX series, they are uh, Win GD. You may have heard of Win GD engine, right? Gas and diesel. GD stands for gas and diesel. So it also uses the same principle as GA, gas admission from the side. So there again, you can actually burn gas. So these kind of engines are called a dual fuel engines because they can burn diesel as well as gases. So the reason you know and how we do it, also you know. Plus, if you for, need further information, uh, you can go to maybe Google and try and understand with this. All right. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir.